Hello, in today's video me and Sparks are talking about how to encourage your cat to use a scratch post rather than your furniture. So first of all cats absolutely need to scratch for claw maintenance and if you're lucky your cat might do this outside on a fence post or a tree trunk but generally having a cat also means having a scratch post or two to make sure they've got that outlet in your home to be able to scratch otherwise you run the risk of them using your sofa or carpet. When choosing a scratch post for your cat there's a few things to remember that, is, that are going to encourage your cat to use them and to make sure that they're not put off from using the scratch post at any given time. Firstly is to give some thought about the material that, that of the post you want them to use. The most common material is sisal rope that's wound around a wooden pole and these usually go down quite well but if it's a brand new post you might need to rough this up a little bit with a wire brush to encourage them to use it particularly if you're replacing one that was previously well used or if the cat is elderly and is not so firm with its claws. You can also get the cardboard types and they're easily available and these are great for providing a horizontal surface for scratching. So this is best if your cat's currently using the carpet or the stairs for their scratching or on top of the arms of the sofa. And you can also get the Hessian types too so it's about using a bit of trial and error to see which, cat, which type your cat will prefer. If you decide on a vertical sizzle post make sure it's big enough for your cat some of them are quite small, so they're perfect for kittens and they cre help create good scratching habits. But remember to replace this as your cat grows with a bigger post. And if you decide on one of the larger scratch towers, make sure the actual scratching part of the post itself is tall enough for them to stretch up to their full height so they can scratch comfortably. Some of the taller towers are made up of lots of smaller posts, so think about which part of the post your cat will actually use for scratching. And when this particular part is worn down, replace the sizzle on the most used part rather than expecting them to move to a different part of the scratch post on the same cat tree. You want to ensure the post is not going to be wobbly while they're scratching or perhaps even topple over on them. Remember your chosen post has to compete with the sofa or carpet, both of which are extremely steady and sturdy. And this goes for the horizontal carbon ones too. But because these are generally lighter anyway, it's best to get one that has space for your cat to sit on it while they scratch as this is the easiest way for them to keep it secure. So once you've chosen your post or box, how do you get them to use it? Firstly, you want to temporarily prevent your cat from continuing to use the carpet or sofa. So you can use plastic sheeting, blankets, a pile of books, anything that you're happy to keep in the area on a temporary basis to stop them going back there and scratching. Then place your post or scratch box right next to this area. So you want them to them to see this as the most obvious alternative to the carpet or sofa. So try to replicate it as much as possible. So if they're using the carpet, use a more horizontal surface, uh, whereas if they're using the sofa arm, then it might be better to put a more vertical post there. So encourage them to use it by playing with your cat around the new post. So run wand toys along it or feathers. So this is going to encourage them to grab onto the post with their claws so they get an idea of what they're supposed to do and that they can get their claws stuck in. You can also use catnip to encourage them to use it too, which works particularly well on the cardboard types as they can lounge out all over the um, scratch board. There's also a product called Fella Scratch made by Siva, which is specifically designed to encourage your cat to use the post, so you might want to give that a try too. Once they are reliably using the scratch post, which may take several weeks, you can gradually move the post to a more convenient location. And if they continue to use it, this is the the time to remove the covers from the sofa or carpet. Just bear in mind that there probably is a reason why they've chosen this location for scratching, so try not to move your posts too far or want to tuck them into a spare room that they don't really go in. Just a final note that if your cat is scratching for attention or trying to get into a closed room, this is going to need to be treated in a different way. Again, protect your surface as much as you can with plastic, carpet square blankets or any, any sort of barrier so that you don't need to worry about the surface while you're having the treatment. Make sure your cat has everything they need in terms of food, water, some are comfortable to rest and they're safe, totally safe and sound. And then you have to absolutely ignore the scratching behaviour and do not allow them into the room that they're trying to get into. Get ready for the scratching to get worse before it gets better as there is that initial extinction burst, which is why it's so important to protect your surface. But as long as you don't reinforce the scratching tool, this should soon phase out and stop altogether. So I hope that's been helpful in getting your cat to scratch on an appropriate surface rather than on your furniture. Thank you all for listening and I'll see you again next time.